The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Hello, friend. Welcome to Grace in Focus for another episode of our radio broadcast and podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today. Last time we started a new series in 1 Peter. We looked at the background information about the book, and today we're ready to dive in. Philippe Sterling is taking the lead on this. Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates are here with us as well. I want to just take a moment before we start this discussion to let you know about the Grace Evangelical Society's National Conference 2023 and to encourage you to join us. It's May the 22nd through the 25th. It's at Camp Copus in Denton, Texas, a beautiful Christian campground. And the theme this year is Vital Free Grace Issues. We'll have lots of great teaching, lots of great fellowship, some great food, and some great recreation. Everything's great. Find out more about it on our website, faithalone.org. Get registered, and we'll see you there. Now here are the discussion partners for today's content from First Peter. I'm Ken Yates. I'm here with Bob Wilkin and Philippe Sterling, and we're going through First Peter. In our first podcast on this book, we talked about introductory issues and the different themes in the book. And now Philippe is going to bring us to the first section of the book. So, Philippe, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to read the beginning of a line and see if you all can complete it. The line is this. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. last. And you know who said that? Jim Elliott. Uh, this is C.T. Studd. Well, Jim that, Elliott quoted it. Well, let me, yeah. let me go on to the second one. All right. He is no fool who, who gives up what he cannot keep. To gain that what, which he cannot lose. What, that and that is, is Jim Elliott. Right. Those statements and that view of life and of our service to the Lord is captured, is encapsulated for us also in the book of First Peter. So Jim Elliott, who did give up his life as a martyr, and C.T. Studd, who was very wealthy, privileged life in England. And he was one of the Cambridge Seven, yes. you know, that left everything. And he ended up spending his life in Africa, an entire life of service to the Lord there. That's kind of what Peter is encouraging us to as we sojourn to this world and how we're to save our life by giving our life. And that's the salvation of the soul yes. that Jesus talked about and that Peter, of course, as a disciple of Jesus, also picks up here and develops in this letter to believers there in, in the northern part of Asia Minor. So you're mentioning that Peter is picking up from the teachings of the Lord, and Peter's talking about the salvation of the soul. Uh, where does the Lord speak about that in his earthly ministry? Yes, of course, the, the Synoptic Gospels, all 12 of them, you know, pick up on this. But I like how Mark puts it in Mark chapter 8, verses 34 to 38 there. It says, when he had called his the people to himself or his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? The word there for soul in that translation yeah. is the same word as life in the previous verse. Yes. Right. It's psuche all the way through. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, the matter of an inheritance and reward comes out in verse 38. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Yeah. But the reverse is true. Those who give up his life for his sake... They will have an inheritance and will get his well done. Yes. You know, to and come to share in his glory and in his in his wool that is to come. So that's the idea that Peter is really developing. Now comes the question, you know, how do we save our souls? Well, we do that in relationship to how we conduct ourselves in our relationship with our Heavenly Father and how we conduct ourselves in our relationship with our fellow believers, with the family of God, with the brethren, how we conduct ourselves in relationship to the world. And that involves how we respond to government authority, how we respond to workplace authority, how we respond even within the nuclear family itself. And Peter's going to address all of that. There's a warfare that we're involved with, warfare for the soul 
of our own desires and, and lust and the influence of the world. And later on at the end of the book, we'll even see where he then talks about the spiritual aspect of Satan also going about, bringing about even some of the suffering that we may encounter. Do you think it would be better based upon the word, how it's used in Mark 8, and particularly in our culture, to just use the word life here, the saving of the life? Because when people hear the saving of the soul, mm-hmm. we automatically jump to, oh, he's talking about, I don't want to go to hell. But the word here, it's legitimate to translate it life, right? The sure. saving of the life. Yeah, I lean toward that. But I also think because people naturally see the word save and salvation as regeneration, it might even be worth it to talk about the deliverance of the life. So change both words. Right. Yeah, the deliverance of the life. Yeah, okay. the deliverance of the life, our life experience, Right. The, that's rewardable by God. Right. And we even use that in nautical language today. When we talk about people who survive shipwreck, we say so many souls were saved. Or so many souls were lost. Yeah. They drowned. It doesn't mean anything about whether they're going to heaven or not. Right. All right. And so the first major relationship Peter addresses is our relationship with the Heavenly Father? Right. One thirteen to 21, he is going to deal with the relationship with the Father. And there's two aspects to our relationship with the Father. One is that we need to duplicate the family likeness. God ah. is holy, so we are to be holy yes. in our behavior. But at the same time, we're to hold the Father with a great deal of respect and that's the second part that he develops there. We need to be holy because we have a, a father that will also will discipline us. And that discipline, it will be a discipline we can experience in life. And also it may be that he will be involved in a very impartial judgment at the end of life for us. Ultimately, as believers, when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, where our life will be evaluated and perhaps be shown to have not developed much value that's rewardable. Or it may have developed a great deal of value that will be rewardable in a full inheritance. So we're to have that attitude where we fix our hope on the Father's program. First of all, in verse 13, it says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Christ will be the full inheritance, in essence. You know, when he is revealed and when our lives are fully revealed also before him. But for that to happen, we need to obey our Father. And that involves being holy as he is holy and having a disposition where we do have a reverent fear of him. And that fear is founded upon several things. It's founded, first of all, on the price of our redemption. We've been redeemed not with perishable things like silver and gold that we might devote our lives to here and now, but we've been redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb. So even what makes possible that relationship with the Father is something that should cause us pause. And in light of the cost of our redemption, how much should we then dedicate ourselves? You know, Is redeemed there... Do we tie that with eternal life or do we tie that with you've been bought out of slavery to sin and now you can conduct yourself in a holy manner? In other words, redemption there is not, I'm going to go to heaven, but I've been set free by the blood of Christ to where now I can serve him and walk in a holy manner. Now, part of our redemption is that we become identified with Christ now in his death and his resurrection so I do think that this does bring in truth that Paul develops in, in Romans 6 through, through 8 as well. And Peter's going to bring that up a little bit later on, which I think refers to the baptism of the Spirit and our identification with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, which makes possible a newness of life here and now. There's a sense in which everybody's redeemed. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, he talks about the false teachers who deny the master who bought um, them. Bought them, redeemed them. And yet, he says in verse 17 of Second Peter 2, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So these are unregenerate people. And also, Paul in Second Corinthians 5 seems to talk about a sense in which there's a universal redemption, but then you need to be redeemed. <laughs> Even though he's already died for you, you need to experience that redemption. 
So I tend to think this refers to both the general universal redemption that's at the cross, that he removes the sin barrier, but also what you're talking about, that he has also set us free once we believe in Christ, he sets us free from slavery to sin. Right. So now we can do the things that he's talking yeah, about in these yeah. verses. And, right. And in light of that, which is by his death, all that is possible. So our response to that certainly should be one of living that new life for him, using that freedom that we've been given to live for him and not conform to evil, indulging our lusts, but rather to conform to holiness. Since our father is holy, we're to be holy as he is holy. What we see in this passage is we have tremendous love for the father because the father sent his son to shed his blood for us. Yes. And so that love relationship motivates our holiness. Yes. I've been a father. I've had two grown children, and then I'm a grandfather now, too. And it's a love relationship with them. But yet at the same time, we've needed to make sure that they have a reverent fear of us, too. Amen. I have a little two-year-old grandson who loves to just take off and, and run. And of course, I stand just when we're in the front yard and there's a road with cars. And one time, you know, he ran into the road and my wife had to just run out after him and picked him up. And for the first time ever, I saw her smack his behind. <laughs> <laughs> and she just sternly said, do not do that. You know, do not run into the street. And he cried briefly and then... That was over. But since then, he hasn't run out into the world. Amen. You know, he is, he is. So we're to have that, that reverent fear of God, too, who mm. will discipline us so that we do not run into danger and lose our lives. And in the next time, we'll move into the second relationship that Peter talks about, which is the relationship we have with other brothers and sisters in Christ. In the meantime... Keep grace in focus. Bob Wilkins' great book, The Ten Most Misunderstood Words in the Bible, is available half price right now in the GES bookstore, faithalone.org. Go there and use the code word MISUNDERSTOOD for 50% off through March the 31st, 2023. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On the site, we've got all kinds of free materials. But one of our popular options is our free ebooks on a range of subjects. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? Let me tell you how to reach out to the team. You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, we continue in 1 Peter, beginning to look at some of the many important relationships that are highlighted in this great book. Please join us for Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.